fuck up. <laughs> Can anyone tell me what movie this is from? Zoolander. Zoolander. Right? Zoolander. Right? I was thinking, like, okay, what is the honestly the hardest part about yeah. these slides is to find the correct gif to go with it, at least like a somewhat of a story. So I thought model, and I was like, what has models? So I just type in model, and I was like, okay, Zoolander, you immediately win. I mean, who doesn't? I've actually never seen, don't hold this against me, I've never seen Zoolander through and through. I've never seen it all the way through. So I hear it's good. My best friend really likes it, uh, but I've never seen it, one or two. So if there's any Zoolander fans out there, I do apologize. All right, so we're gonna hop into this. Actually, I need to get a few more things set up here. I'm getting already on my Zoolander rant. Do, do, do. Cool. Cool. All good. All right. Let's not do that. Come on, Slack. Help me out here. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so let's get started. Um, happy Thursday, everybody. I hope everyone's had a great week here. A very snowy, cold, awesome week. At least it's sunny today, so we can thank the weather people for that um, here, at least in St. Louis. Uh, I know that there are some people in elsewhere, but apparently down to Texas, it's cold. So I don't know where anyone else is hiding out. Um, but hopefully it's warm if you're not in Missouri or wherever you're at, if you've been able to escape. Um, hopping in here. So going over announcements, we just have a couple uh, here today. The first one being no lecture on Monday. So you do not get to hear me rant on Monday. I'm so sorry if you were looking forward to that. <laughs> Go directly to your work groups um, right when uh, 5.30 hits to work on assignment three. That's what this is going to be. Remember, this is the time to ask your TAs all those questions, get them out there, fill in those knowledge gaps, and get assignment three through the door or start assignment four if you have nothing else. Next thing is, is that... Unfortunately, on my end, my work schedule has still been absolutely terrible. So I say that with a smile, but I don't know why everybody is thinking right now is the best time to ask for everything. So I do still not do have those studio videos, the, the ones that are done um, on my own, but I do have the live video from the last week. And I also have, uh, I'm going to be doing a live studio review tonight starting at 8 p.m. If you're not able to make that because you're still working with your groups, don't worry, continue working with your groups. I'm going to record it. So feel free to uh, come on down. If, if you do want to go through that studio, I'll be just starting out the Zoom link back on this one at 8 p.m. Finally, I'm going to, uh, just a reminder, uh, starting on Tuesday, I'm going to have limited access to internet. So if you do send me any questions, please continue to do so. I will just have a slight delay in responding whenever I do get some service back. So just want to let everybody know that. Any questions about any of this? All righty, sounds good. And then one last final small announcement is that if you can't tell my voice and or the coughing and the sneezing, uh, Monday's issue of just like kind of not feeling well has turned into a full-fledged uh, sinus infection. So <laughs> I'm going to be coughing all day or coughing all lecture and I do apologize as well as maybe some sniffle here and there and maybe an occasional sneeze. So if you do feel unsafe, feel free to reach for those masks to protect yourself against whatever this is. It is not COVID though, found that out, but it is a pain under the tush and does not make for a good talking time. So with all of that, let's get going here. The first thing, we're gonna start out strong with some questions just to see if we are still fresh with MVC and some other stuff. First question being, what part of the MVC accepts requests and sends responses? Who can tell me what this is? What do we call this? Controller. Controller. controller, awesome job. Yes, absolutely. This is our controller. One of three parts of our MVC model. Second question, what data structure grows and shrinks as we add and remove items from it? Array list. Oh. Array list. Very good, an array list that we can plug any kind of object into there. So it can be an object, it can be a dog, a cat, a string, etc. Third, what loop continues to iterate while a certain conditional is true? And I can take two answers for this one. While loop. While loop. While loop. And then can anyone tell me the second one? For each. For each. For each would actually, that's just iterating over a set amount of numbers. The do while loop, but it had, the do while, very good. It's very close cousin. 
But in this one, I was just looking for while loop, but the do while also uses conditionals. Continuing on, what part of the MVC contains the what the user sees and interacts with? View. The view. Awesome. Very good. So that being view, we're going to continue on views and just hop back into that just like last lecture and talk about it just a little bit here, bringing up a view. We are missing something very essential here. We are missing something in particular on the HTML tag. Who can tell me what we're missing? <coughs> to make this a timely template. XML NS. Very good. That XML NS with that colon TH. I don't expect you to have the whole thing memorized. You definitely don't have to, but just remembering that you have to have that special little header, excuse me, that special little attribute on the HTML tag. Just remember that's there. All right. So another question I want to ask, and it's not too much about HTML per se, but what are the files called that hold our styling? CSS. Very good, the CSS. In this case, I'm going to just call this example styles.css. Diving a little bit more into this. How do we add a styling directly for a tag, say a div tag? How would we write that in our styles.css? Um. Either, either ID or class. You just so add this. What was that, Corey? You add style equals. So this is we're just writing this directly in the styles.css class. So an actual CSS file. How would we give a tag div a style? You have to use a line. pound sign or a dot before it. So right. pound sign yeah, or a dot. Curly brackets. You just Very need good. Div, div curly brackets. It's Very actually. good. Thank yep. You. Absolutely. Great job. Div and then curly brackets. So the dot and the hashtag or the pound sign are for something different. So this is how we give tags directly styling in our styles.css class. If I wanted to say maybe all my divs have a background color of red, this is how I would do that. I'd give it this attribute. Yep. Or how we would use this is that we would say div and then close div. And then all of my divs inside of my HTML that link up to the styles.css will have a background of red. Let's move on. Or actually, I'm sorry, any questions about this one in particular? All right, moving on. How do we create a styling class called pet page in this same styles.css file that we're doing? Um, that is the dot pet page. Very good, absolutely. We're gonna do dot pet page, the period, the dot dictate it's a styling class. Then we have a background color of green here. So how we would use that in just an example for a body tag, we'd say body class equals pet page. That's how we would implement this. Continuing on, last but not least, how do we create an ID styling called dog text? Hashtag dog text. Very good. Hashtag dog, uh, oh, hashtag, pound sign. oh. <laughs> sorry. Pound sign, yeah, hashtag yeah. pound sign. Hashtag and pound I, have some, I have some inconsistencies <laughs> here. Let me just switch that over here. Uh, no, that's all fine. But I know this one's going to have an issue. Beep, beep, beep. Sorry, guys. Give me one second. There we go. All righty. So just want to make sure that there's no questions around that. So if we want to use that hashtag pet text, then we, in that paragraph, say pet text. Any questions about these three things? These are the main three Context of a styling class. We have our direct stylings for divs or for anything things like P or article. Then we can create styling classes with that period. And then ID stylings with the hashtag or pound sign. If there's no questions about that, we will keep going. So my question to you all now on this one is how do we attach that styles.css to our page that we just made? We just made that styles.css. How do we attach it to this page? Who can uh, tell me? Creator. You, you this is a class, make a class or a directory with a, a styling folder in it. So we already have our styles.css made. We just made that in the last example. So hypothetically, we already have our styles.css created when we're in here. 
So how do we attach it to this HTML? What tag do we start with? Link. 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 Very link. good. Link. We start with link. And then what's next? If we want to do this through the R -E -L time -L equals. Oh. Reference. Th th ref. Very good. Thhref equals at sign curly brackets and then styles.css. So we can find this directly. And then I also heard the last part as well. Rel. Rel equals style sheet. Never ever forget this rel because it does cause problems if we do. Mm. All right. Once we've attached the styles.css, then we can bring in what we just did, such as down in our H3. Now I can bring in that ID. You can say ID dog text, and now my dog page. My dog page would be blue or whatever I made it. I forgot what exactly what it was, but this will just inject that color there for my text. This is how we can do that styling. Any questions about styling, CSS, or anything with the HTML or templates? Because if not, we're going to move into some heavy hitters with CSS here just a little bit more. We had a lot of things to do last lecture, so I wanted to bring some of the materials that I didn't really get to, but it is important stuff into the beginning of this lecture. And one of those is just how CSS can be grow very, very rapidly. As we saw in that past example, all we wanted was a background color or setting our text color, but we know web pages today don't just have one or two CSS properties in their styling. They have many. And these things can grow pretty quickly. And it's hard to keep things consistent across your site. You want your user to see consistency across your site. You don't want a button on the, on the beginning part of your page to be blue, but the button at the very end of the page to be green because your user will get confused. Consistent, consistency keeps your users happy. One way we can implement consistency and also simplify our CSS is bring in a thing called Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a set of CSS stylings that are out there for free for us to use. It provides great looking standards for our HTML elements as well as our page. Again, users like consistency and that's why us as developers like Bootstrap and other things like it. A quick example of how we use Bootstrap is that, that we linked it, which we can see here in a moment. We would want to say input type equals button to create a button. And then our classes is where we really implement that bootstrap. We say class equals button, BTN. And then the other class we bring in is the button success. This would tell our input that it's gonna be a button, but also a green button. Real quick, if anyone had any confusion about how to bring bootstrap in. If we go to bootstrap CDN here, all we wanna do is grab the CSS styling link here and link it to our HTML sites. We just went through how we did that. If we went to index.html here and I wanted to create a link for that, all we would do is say link href, because we're not doing a timely, um, href. we're not doing a timely thing. And then I would put that directly in here. And then of course, rel equals style sheet. And oh, as always, my quotes are messed up. There we go. So this is how we would link that in there. The same with the JavaScript, except that with this one, we're going to be doing a little something different. We would have to do source, and we'd have to do JavaScript for that. Or is it script? I always forget that one. So right now, I'm just going to be showing you CSS. But this is how we would bring in that CSS styling into our, our, uh, our page here. So any questions about this, how we hook it up, and why the heck do we even care about Bootstrap? I have a question about, I was looking for options. Okay, like, I mean, you, you talked about the, uh, the button style. Where is the list and example of, I don't know what I want, but I want a button style. So if you want that kind of introduction, you're gonna to wanna to go to this kind of documentation here. I'll post this in the general chat. This will tell you what you wanna do when you wanna do it. If you wanna make your buttons look like a certain way, this documentation will tell you how using Bootstrap. Is okay. this kind of more what you're looking for? Well, I was thinking, okay, well, what if I want a red button? You know, where, where is it gonna tell button failure or button? It would be button error, but yes, you're close. Okay, but I mean, how would I, where would that be in here? Okay, there we go. Okay. Yep. So you would just want to search what you're looking for. 
and it has stylings for everything. It has buttons, text boxes, labels, everything under the sun it has stylings for. Go ahead and search that in there and explore the documentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, absolutely. And let me go ahead and put that in there. I'm just gonna paste that meow. There we go, already. And I'm looking like I'm already missing somebody here. Okay, Kim, if I can get to an example like that to help you out with IntelliJ, uh, with Git, I will absolutely do so. Um, if not, we can always plan time one-on-one -on -one or talk to your TA. Um, all right, so if no other questions about Bootstrap, we are going to move into our best friend in the whole wide world in NBC here, the controller. Everybody loves the controller, right, everyone? Right, yeah, two thumbs up, everyone loves the controller? Kinda? No? All right, Julie, you like it, yeah? <laughs> Awesome, all right, there you go, there's a thumbs up. All right, so let's go ahead and create this controller for the dog then. As always, we say public class dog controller, nothing new here. Our favorite annotation goes on top that says at controller. And then we're gonna go into a question that I have for you all, is that how do we create a get mapping for our dog create link using the dog.html template? <coughs> what would we start with? Get mapping and get mapping. Get mapping and what would go inside that get mapping? Can someone tell me what would go inside those quotes? Slash dog slash create. Very good, yes. You can put slash dog slash create or just dog slash create. But you can do the get mapping here that says dog slash create so we can make it directly to that link. As always, we, then, we build a uh, then we build a method here. We do not include response body annotation because why? Can anyone tell me? What are we gonna be doing here instead? Pulling it from the uh, dog HTML template. Very good, because we're using a template. So that being said, what do we need to return here if we wanna use that dog.html template? Dog.html. So when we're trying to return a template, dog. we have to remember that we drop the HTML, but you were, yeah, exactly. So you say dog, not H, dot HTML. You just say the word dog. All right, any questions about this? Because now we have to do the fun, fun thing of implementing it. Real quick, because that these templates can take a long time to create, I have a few pre-made ones. I just wanna let you know that. So uh, dog.html was pre-made. I'm just gonna give you guys a quick glimpse of it. All it is is that it is a typical template, as we can see from here from the HTML. We're implementing our bootstrap up here. Uh, and then I have a few other things. You might see this, it's very similar to what we were working with in our exercise. We have those forms, those form controls. So it might be somewhat, um, you might be able to recognize it just a bit. So let's go over to our dog controller here and we're gonna implement that. What did we say that the first annotation we had to do was? to create that mapping? Mm. 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 What annotation will we be? Get mapping, very good. And then we said we're gonna make it a dog slash create. So we're gonna try to create a dog here. So now we're gonna say public string. Oh, I forgot what I called this. I really did. Dang, dang, dang. Mm. Let's say, oh, create dog page, perfect. Create dog page. All right. And then what do we say we had to return? Dog. Very good, dog, because we dropped that HTML. Awesome. All right, so we quickly run this guy. And it gives me a second to take a drink of water. All right, we're all up and running here now. So let's go back over here, localhost, we refresh. There, don't forget, this is our home page over here. We created this. And what I wanna go to is dog slash create. That was the mapping we just created. And now I see I'm presented with some very fancy looking uh, text boxes as well as a button. This is our success button. So if I say uh, Stark, and then I say age seven, I say create, it's gonna blow up. Who can tell me why this blew up? You don't have any post mapping. 
Do you? I love that idea. Yes, because we don't have any post mappings. So because we don't have any post mappings, but now we're seeing that pretty page, let's go ahead and start moving on and see what else we can do here. Who can tell me how we create that post mapping for that dog create pathway for all of our params? Just to remind you that we had two text boxes for name and age. How would we begin to create this? Add post mapping. Very good. Post mapping with that URL, dog slash create. And then I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and then <clears throat> in this one, I'm going to say response body just for simplicity right now, just for this example, because we're just going to return a general string, not a template just yet. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the method. What do I need to put here? What am I missing? If we have two text boxes with information coming back, what do we need to include here? Request, request parameters. Pattern. Very good, yes. Add, at sign request parameters for the name and the age. Remember, it is absolutely essential that name and age line up with, come on the cursor, with the actual name of your text box. It is absolutely cru uh, crucial, critical other words like that. Make sure that they line up. Continuing on, I'm going to say, I'm just going to return a string here that says created a dog name, blah, blah, blah. That's blah years old. That's what, how I'm going to create this post mapping. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to go back over to dog controller. If I get my cursor. No, post mapping. And I say dog slash create. And I say public. And saying, oh, yeah, I am missing one annotation that I promised I'd put myself. There we go. Response body, public. What did I call that thing? Create a dog. Public string create a dog. There we go. And then we said we we're gonna put in those request parameters. So we say, what remember what the exact annotation was for this? What do we say? What's the annotation to take in stuff? At request param. Request param. Very good. So we say string. Don't forget about that data type. After the annotation goes the data type, name, and the same thing. Again, we saw that we sometimes don't have to do this, but just for good practice, I like putting it in there. One thing I do also want to point out is that, or, well, first, I'm going to return this. I said created a dog named name with age of plus age. So this should return right to, the, uh, right to our screen a sentence with whatever we provide in that text box. One thing I do want to point out in dog.html that I did make this second text box down here, age of type number. So I can only take in a number inside of this text box. So that being said, let's go ahead and restart our server and try this one out. Should get here in a second. All right, going back here, we're gonna go back, refresh. Someone give me a dog name. Who can think of a good dog name? Mm. Fido. Squid. Fido, got it. How old's our dog? 173. 173. Wait, how do you do 173? 173. There we go. Numbers. Create. And look at that. We created Fido with an age of 173. What a great dog. Man's best friend sticking around for 173 years. Fantastic. All right. So this is how we do our post mapping with just, a, again, one of those basic response bodies. We've seen that in a few past lectures. So none of this should be too new. But any questions surrounding what we just did? All right, let's keep adding fun stuff to it then. <coughs> okay, so as we see that we have this request parameter name and the re request parameter age just sitting out there, we know and we've worked with things in the past that can take in the name and the age and create something of value to us. In Java, again, we love objects. Java is just obsessed with objects and in that case, we don't want just data sitting out there, if it, especially if it's related in any way, that dog's age and that dog's name are definitely related. So therefore, 
we need to be able to create a dog object to contain this information in. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So what I'm gonna do here is get my cursor. Oh my gosh, computer, come on, work with me. I'm gonna say new and then package and then say models. This is the start of our models. Remember models is the way we architect our data as well as some logic within it as well. That data we wanna architect right now or that object we wanna create is our dog class. So we create public class dog here. Now we've seen all of this before. We know how to create a class and we definitely know how to create a dog. So first things first, we start with our class variables. So after our class variables comes what? What do we make second? Constructors. Very good, constructors. And inside this constructor, what are we gonna take in? String name and age. Int age. There we go. And then we say this dot name equals name and this dot age. Uh oh. Come on, this dot age equals age. All right. So, any questions about that? We did our class variables at the top, we did our constructor in the middle. I know this is slightly boring because we've seen this a thousand times, but any questions about this? And if not, what comes next? Who can tell me what comes after the constructors? Getter and setter. Getters and setters. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to cheat with IntelliJ. I'm gonna come right click, come down here, press generate. Say I wanna get some getters here. I highlight both by holding down the shift key, press okay, and our getters have been generated. I do the same thing for the setters. I go back down to generate, I go to setter. I highlight both, I press okay, and bam! Just like that, we have our getters and setters for this dog. Awesome. So now we have a dog object to contain our information in. Once we have that, we can then utilize that within our method here. We're back in that post mapping. And now we're actually creating a dog object within our post mapping. Again, this is nothing crazy. We've absolutely seen this before. But now we wanna be able to return something using our dog object. So what I'm gonna do is quickly create a two string method here. So we can actually return something in our response body. Who can tell me how I create a two string method? What do I need to start with? Um, override. Very good, at override, awesome. Yeah, well, I don't think that. And then two string. Again, I like to use IntelliJ just to cheat like a little bit. So my dog's name is this dot name and is uh -oh, this dot age years old. All right. So I created that two string method now inside of my dog. So whenever I call to it, it can actually give me some valuable text back instead of that just random characters and numbers that it usually does if I just didn't do anything to this two string method. So if we come back here, the last thing we can do now is actually return our dog dot two string. We can utilize that two string method to send back a request body. So if we did that actually over in our code, what we can do is that we say dog, my dog equals new dog name age and we always have to import that class and then someone remind me what do i need to return here what do i need to put down here in order to get that string out of my dog 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 dot two string close what's our variable name my dog my dog my dog Oh. My dog dot two string. Remember, we only want to access static uh, static methods through the actual class name, which would be dog. So we have return my dog two string here. So let's go ahead and restart our server and see if everything's still there. I mean, hopefully it is. Remember, it's always great to practice or restart your server or at least test your code every possible step of the way so we know we didn't break anything. So now that we started it, come back here. Go back, always make sure we refresh. And someone give me a dog name. Wiggy. 
Waggy. All right. How old is Waggy? Two. Four and a half. Two. 2.4. Actually, I, that might break it. <laughs> so I'm going to press create. There we go. <laughs> my dog, it might break it because we're going to put in a decimal, and I really did not test the uh, integrity of that one. So my dog's name is Waggy, and it is two years old. Remember, we're returning this information through that two-string method through our, through our post mapping. So looks like everything is still working. Any questions about what we just did here with models? We just got in, in, immersed kind of immersed in models here and how we're going to use them to construct data so we can ship it around. So any questions just yet before we dive even deeper into it? Because if not, everyone grab their snorkeling gear. We're going to get a little bit deeper here. So let's keep moving on here. And we're going to take it one step further. And again, we see that our name and our age are there which is great, but we also, know our, we also know that our name and our age are utilized to create a dog object. Now, as we've already know, and I've told you multiple times, developers can be extremely lazy. So what if we could, instead of having to always create our dog object on this line, we instead have something that just knows it's a dog, ob dog object automatically. How we can do that is utilizing the model inside of our parameters. What we can do here, instead of constantly taking that name and that age, is provide a parameter here that has the annotation model attribute, and then actually have our dog class sitting there. So we have dog, dog. That means we no longer need that line right there. We just saved ourselves a whole line of code means we can go to lunch maybe a second earlier. But we can still use that same exact return statement, dog.toString. Now this one might be a little interesting. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at model attribute here. Let's go back to those days where we got to learn how to click the button. So at first, say you're on google.com, you type in google.com at the very top or you type in any website that you typically go to and you press enter, what kind of request gets sent out? Get request. A get request. When you press enter on that URL bar, you send out a get request. You want to build that page. That's what a get request does. I want to go see this page. Okay, that's fine. Send me a get request. That's what's going on. If we sent a get request to this dog and this create, we get a rudimentary look of this. We get two text boxes and we get a create button. So if I filled out, which we've already done previously in this lecture today, filled out Stark and I filled out age seven here, and then I press create, what happens after I press that button? Mm. Well, right now, post. Not... The post. As of yeah. right now, it still does the post. We do have that hooked up in our code. It does send out a post request. So a post request is sent directly to that localhost 8080 slash dog slash create. So when that post gets sent, as we've already seen before, that data gets transferred over to the post mapping that we already have in our dog controller. And attached to it is name equals Stark and age equals seven. Now what's happening is that it goes over there and it sees this little friend called model attribute with dog in it. And it's like, okay, you want me to do something pretty cool. I have to check out a few things first. So what it does is that it dives in to the class dog. And what it's looking for, or sorry, dives into the class dog. And what it's looking for is the constructor that has name and age inside of it with that exact same, with those exact same names. We are looking for a name and an age inside of our constructors. So what it's doing here, what that model attribute annotation is doing is helping us find the object dog and the specific constructor that we're trying to call to to create this object. So that's what model attribute do, does and that's what the power of models are is that we can, instead of taking in 85 parameters, say on a long form that we have to fill out for you know, taxes or something, 
we can just put in a single object there with a model attribute and it just fills out everything for us as long as we keep those names consistent. So any questions about that before we see it in action? All right, then let's see it in action. So we said that we want to no longer have this in here. We want to take out this name and age and actually just have a dog model or dog object coming through our parameters. So who can tell me what that annotation was that we used to tell uh, tell our constructor and tell our mapping to look for this object. At model attribute. Very good, at model attribute. And then we say dog, and I'm gonna say my dog again. So, like I said, we get to remove this line of code there, and we still get to keep this return. The fun thing about this is that this is the only change we have to do. Unless something, something's in my mind which we'll just run and figure that out. But as of right now, just take it with a grain of salt, but this is all we have to do. All we have to do is add the annotation model attribute dog, my dog, and spring does the rest. So let's go ahead and see this in action. We should still see us getting back that same exact thing that says my dog is name with the age of blah. So let's go ahead and see if we do that. I'm gonna go back to our form, I'm gonna click refresh, I'm going to type in a dog's name, which give me a third time trying. Give me a dog name, please. Pebbles. Pebbles? I like it. How old is Pebbles? Seven. I Eight. swear it over two. Oh, jeez. Sean, I swear. All right, negative one. Uh. <laughs> what is I squared over two? I was like thinking, it's like, we can't do imaginary numbers in here. Um, all right, we're going with seven because that's a great number. <laughs> Create, and we still get that, that exact same response body there. Nothing has changed. But what did change is that we just simplified our code by a lot. So what does this mean for us? That means we can go into this dog object, and we can uh, add as many different attributes as we want into our dog class, add them to our form, and everything is taken care of it for us, which really simplifies a lot. So any questions about this? It is extremely powerful and we'll see a lot of this in assignment four and yeah, we'll see a lot of this in assignment four and I believe maybe a little bit in three. I don't know exactly, I don't remember for sure, but it is a very fun concept and it really helps out in MVC. All of the uh, parameters required? Technically, no. Um, as, as I mentioned, that it will look for the closest signature. What do I mean by that? Say we no longer have, where's my mouse, there we go. Say we no longer have this int age inside of our parameter, it will still choose this constructor, but we'll no longer have an age assigned to it. So we'll say zero here, restart. And what it does is that it just finds its constructor and is like, okay, close enough. Here's the, here's the data. But let's make sure that I'm not blowing smoke. My, I guess my question really was if you didn't put a number in there. So if I didn't put a number down here? Yes. Uh, same thing that we're about to see. So if we just said pebbles and press create, oh, oh. I might be blowing smoke on this one. I might have it backwards. Let's see my air. Did do for input string. Uh, I think for this one, does we need to put uh, required equal to false in module prim? Sorry. In model attribute. Oh, in the model frame. I don't believe I have. Like, just besides. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I I think you're a little ahead. We're not quite there just yet. Oh, but okay. Yes, you are. You are correct. You are absolutely correct. We can have annotations to protect us from this. Okay. Um, but we're not just there yet. <laughs> okay. Um, but no, awesome job. <laughs> um, 
So as of right now, I forgot which way it is. It's if you don't send it over, let me see. We'll restart this and see if we can go again. So it looks like we do need to have those both in the constructor. Uh, I always forget the limitations that I'm seen. So there we go. That's why I like to explore. Refresh. All right, let's put Pebbles back in there and let's see if he'll be more well behaved. Oh, it is because we're not sending it over. Okay, neato. Okay. So it really just doesn't like it because we're not sending, we're literally not sending anything over. It must be null. And so it's just not having a great day. So honestly, just kind of showing you, trying to show you that if you get into the meat of it, what actually happens. But um, try to keep your form as of right now with your inputs and the names of those inputs tied very closely to the constructor of the object you're trying to do. Otherwise, you'll see that error, which is great to see. It looks like you'll get that 400 error if that happens. Hey, you guys, so, I apologize about the babies every now and then in the background. Sorry. You're all good. Uh, Jay, does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, yes. OK. Yeah, know, just trying to keep those. Oh, Tom, I, say, I think Sorry. it uses the setters. So it's basically passing null to one of the setters. Is that what it is? OK. Thanks, I was afraid if it was using the setters of the constructor. OK. Um. We can definitely test that out. I will see. I, Tom, I, I'm sure you're right. Um, let's see here. Okay. If we have time at the end, I'm going to come back and we're going to get to the bottom of that because that is extremely important. So, um, besides uh, the getters and setters and the limitations of what's coming back there in that kind of data flow. Any other questions just surrounding the uh, Java here or the HTML that we're doing? All right, so we're gonna move on then. Excuse me. All right, so we're back to needing that dog and what we're gonna dive into a little bit more is that we are going to create just that simple controller. We're bringing it back. Nothing here has changed too much. We're still taking in that model attribute. Um, and what we're gonna do here is, what if we wanted to save this dog into a static array list within the dog controller? What do we need to add at the top? Can someone tell me? We wanna add a class variable that's static and an array list, what would we put at the top? Um, private static uh, array list. Very good, private static array list. And then our array list is going to be an array list of what kind of object? Dog. dog. Very good, yes, private static array list, my dogs. So once we have this variable up here that we can save the dogs in, where we're creating this dog is inside of this post mapping. So that being said, where we add dogs into my dogs array list is down here in the create a dog method, that post mapping. So this model attribute is creating a dog and then adding it to my dogs. So this is how we can just add dogs into the static array list. Now, why would we wanna do this? Because as you've seen in your exercises and maybe on any other just messing around with MVC, that if it's not static, you're gonna lose that data within your array list. And we can't really transfer that information between these different dog controllers that are being created. Hence, enter static array list. Remember, static is on the class level, meaning this data isn't gonna go anywhere if new instances are created here and there. In the end, data stays in one spot when it's static. And that's what we need here on a controller. So it really does help us out. So moving on, what if I wanted to redirect this post mapping to a slash, sh uh, slash show route? What would I do here? What do we need to change? Um, the, the post mapping. So it won't be in the post, it will be in the post mapping method but we have to change something here. How do we implement a redirect? We saw it at the very end of lecture last, uh, or on Monday. Redirect colon. 
in your is it in your, your return statement? It is in the return statement. Very good. It's redirect colon. And I want to redirect to a specific page. So what I say is redirect colon show. This is telling whenever this renders that I want to redirect directly to the show page. One more thing I need to do as well is because this is more of a template that I'm redirecting or a different post mapping. I'm doing, excuse me, this is a different mapping I'm redirecting to. I'm not actually responding with a response body of text or anything like that. I need to remove that at response body annotation. So it's a two-step process. We need to return that return statement, or we need to change the return statement to redirect colon show and remove that at response body annotation. So any questions about this? Redirect is extremely powerful as well because it's going to direct us to a completely new mapping. Our all right, so if we, my question to you guys all then is that if we did redirect a show, what would happen right now? Have we seen a show route? Have we seen any no. kind of mapping for show? No. No, so what would happen if we try to do this right now? It'd break. It would break, absolutely. We get a 404 back. So let's go ahead and move on and create a mapping for that. I'm gonna use another pre-made template, show dogs, which if we just look at it real quick is just exactly what we did with the cats, but we're creating just a list of dogs here. So, because we just want a list of dogs, we need to pass in a dogs variable here. Not like that, not like that either. We want to pass in a dogs variable here. So let's get to work with that. First things first, we need to create a mapping for the actual show route. So I say at get mapping show, and then show all dogs. And then I need to return that template. Again, we drop the HTML, so we just say show dogs. So my question to you all is that, how would we pass in my dogs into our template? What do we need to do here? Model parameter. So you're, you're correct. We need to bring in the model. So the first thing we do is that we put in model here in the parameters. We say model, which is a data type, and then you say model. So once we bring that into the parameters, what do we need to use on model? What method do we need to use to bring in attributes into our template? Add attribute. Okay. Very good. Model.add attribute. This is how our Java talks to our HTML. Without it, there's no way they can communicate. So the variable that we saw in that HTML template that we just looked at was dogs. But add attribute takes in two different parameters, two different arguments. What would be the second argument here? Value. So what are we actually passing in at for dogs? We need to pass in our list. So my what dog. do we actually, my dogs, very good. We need to pass in my dogs here. This is the value we actually need to assign to our template with the name dogs in there so we can use it. So let's go ahead and take these changes that we just saw and put them into our dog controller. All right, first things first, we said we wanted to create a array list. So we say private and then we needed to make static. So someone tell me the syntax of creating this array list that's private and static. Anybody at all? Private static. Private static array list. Array list, very good. And what is our object that we're going to be collecting in here? My dog. My dog. Dog. We're going to actually put the object name. We put the actual type of object into these pointy brackets here. And we called it, what we just called it, well, my dogs. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. My dogs. And then we say new array list. There we go. Oh, and then we import that class. Perfect. So hey, our hey static. Kyle, yeah. You have to say new array list. Can't you do it to the place where you can, uh, like, uh, can't you shorthand that? Is there a way to shorthand um, that? 
Not really. You're going to have to, you're going to create the instance of the array list. There's no way around this. If you don't do it up here, you're going to have to do it in the constructor. It has to have new somewhere or else the instance can't be created. Okay. All right. So down here is where we actually create that dog. So how do I add a dog to my dog's array list? What do I say? Hmm. My dog dot add. My dogs dot add. And then I add my dog. Great. So now we're adding this my dog that we get back from our model into our array list, our static array list there. So the next thing we have to do is that we said we need to redirect to that show mapping that we're going to create here momentarily. So how do we redirect again to that show? Redirect show. Redirect and then don't forget our colon. R E C T colon and then show. <coughs> Remember what a redirect does, it goes immediately to the get mapping for this. So down here now I'm going to create the get mapping for that. So what do I put in these parentheses if I want to create a route for show? Show. Sure. Very good. All right. And then oh, one more thing I forgot here. Remember, I got to take out this response body. I'm no longer returning text. I'm going to be actually returning a redirect. So down here, I'm going to say public string show my dogs. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to return. Oh, sorry. I, I apologize. I need to pass these dogs, my dogs, into our template, which is show dogs over here. But what do I need to put into what do I need to put into this method to begin doing that? The request for you. So if I want to start talking to the model. The first thing I have to do, first thing, More is do what up here? Exactly. If we want to start talking to the model, the first thing we have to do is tell the model that we want to talk to it by putting it into our parameters. Now, what's the next thing? If we want to pass this my dogs attribute over to the model, over to our template, what do we put here? Model dot, model dot add attribute. Very good. Model dot add attribute. And I said dogs here, I wanted to call it. And then I say my dogs. All right. And then finally, we want to show the show dogs HTML. So what do I return here? Show dogs. Show dogs. Very good. Show dogs. We dropped that HTML. Perfect. All right. So let's go ahead and see if this works. Moment of truth. I feel like I'm gonna lose my voice before the weekend. I know I am. All right, I'll start it up here. We're gonna come back here, refresh. And moment of truth, we'll do stick with pebbles. Age of seven, create. Oh, might be, might be, might be. Um, we need to put a slash in front of that. So what it did to see what this error was, was that it came up here and it replaced our create with slash show. What that means is that it appended show in the current directory. It just replaced it. And why I did that is because we didn't put a slash here. If you remember when you get your packages from your imports or when you're getting it uh, back in JavaScript, if you put a slash in front of it, that means you want to start your home directory and work your way up. Same with the redirect. So let's go ahead and rerun this. There we go. All righty, go back. Excuse me. I apologize. All right. Pebbles seven. Create. And there we go. Our first one is added. All right. Let's go back to our dog create and add now Stark 
for age two. Create that. And now we have my dog's name is Pebbles, seven years old, and we have my dog's name is Star at two. Remember that we're using that array list to keep remembering that information now. So we're able to create this list and build it as we, as we get more dogs. So now we can collect as many dogs as we want. Isn't that awesome? Everybody happy about that? Yes. Awesome. Yes. I'll take that. Heck yeah. All right. So any questions about what we're doing here, why we're doing it, or what the heck is happening? On the um, redirect, why wasn't it um, uh, show dogs? It's just show. I just wanted to show that we can do different pathways. You don't have to do it this way. If you wanted to, you could absolutely do dogs, uh, dog slash show if you wanted to. Oh, no, no. Like, um, isn't the HTML show dog, show hyphen dogs? Oh, are you talking about right here? Uh, yes. So why doesn't on the redirect have to be that whole line? Because here we're just telling it about a path name. We're just telling it about a file name. It doesn't have to be the same. It just so happens in a lot of our exercises, they're the same name, but it doesn't have to be. Okay. Yeah, great question. Because I see that, like, even if you look here at dog, technically we're using the path create. So these are completely different. Um, yeah, it, 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 that is definitely not anything that is uh, technically connected in any way. Great question about that. It's, uh, other... it's redirecting to the Git mapping, right? Not the HTML file. It's so this slash show is redirecting to the Git mapping that produces the HTML. The Git mapping produces the HTML. Without this Git mapping, we can't go to HTML. The Git mapping takes in the request and the response is HTML. That's the power of the, uh, that is the power of the controller. Austin, does that like make a little bit more sense or do you want to dive a little bit deeper into that? No, that, that helps. Okay. Remember, controllers do two things. They take in requests, they produce responses. The mapping, the Git mappings are the requests and then what we return are the responses. And what we do in the middle is the cool stuff. All right. Anything else about this? All right. One last thing we need to do here is that, so we just create an array list. We're remembering that data. We're able to build upon that data for our users now when they're in our web application. So let's take one more step here and talk about when we are actually passing around data that's critical for our application. As of right now, we know our dog controller has that array list full of dogs. But if we remember in our uh, index, our home page, we are currently compiling a list of cats. But what if we wanted to compile a list of dogs? So we have our cats and our dogs all in one place. Why don't we finally unify cats and dogs? Wouldn't that be great? We end the war between cats and dogs just here in this web application. Let's try to do that. So our dog controller has those dogs inside of it. Our cat controller has no idea about that data. So as a cat, it politely asks, yo dog, can I get your information? Can you give me your list? And the dog slightly also politely says, heck no, Mr. Whiskers, I'm not gonna give it to you because we know this variable is private. There is absolutely no way they're gonna share this information. It's private, it's mine, I'm the dog, I have my dogs. So again, why can't we just have, why can't everyone be friends here? The question that we should be asking ourselves is how can we let my dogs, my array of dog, or my <laughs> array list of dogs be shared amongst everybody? Why can't everyone have a slice of the pie? Insert the data layer. <clears throat> the data layer helps us share information across classes that typically wouldn't communicate. That's why we use this. It's a central place that we can store information that other classes or other controllers can utilize when they're trying to do their stuff, AKA sharing our data across controllers. This is a very powerful concept. This is how we transfer information from one kind of context to another kind of context, from a dog context to a cat context, et cetera. 
So to build this data layer, what we do is that we start out with just a general typical public class dog data. It's going to contain the data of the dogs that we want. So instead of having that array list inside of the dog controller, we put it inside of the dog data class. Remember, it's static. And it's still private. We haven't changed anything about that. It's absolutely still private. So to access that, we need to create getters, a static getter for those dogs, and a static setter as well. We keep these methods static. So now with this class that can be imported from the, by the cat controller and the dog controller, both classes can then get access to this information without having to bicker back and forth. So this is how sharing looks like caring. So let's go ahead and take a look at this actually in code. We come over here and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna come up to our, um, up to our stuff up here and create another package and say data. And here's where we're gonna have our data layer. Those things that are monitoring and managing all that data that we wanna share across controllers. Remember, this is only data that's shared across controllers. If you truly don't want to share that data, don't make a data layer for it. In this case, I do want to share my dogs. So I'm going to say Java class. I'm going to say dog data. As we said, we want to go over to our dog controller. Yoink. It's no longer just yours. We're going to share this across. We're going to share it with the cats. Go over here. We paste that in. And now we create those getters and setters. Oh, I don't use this in the context of stacks. Dogs, there we go. And I'm in the mindset of JavaScript right now. There we go. And then we do a setter for it. So we say void set. My dogs, array list, dogs, and we say my dogs equals dogs. One thing I do want to point out in here too, if you wanted to create more methods to help out with uh, how the data flow goes, such as maybe you don't want to set all of your array list at once, maybe you just want to add individual items, feel free to create more methods in here. Just make sure they're static and make sure you, they do have something to do with the data and how it's being managed. Otherwise, it doesn't belong in this class. So we go over to our dog controller and we see that it's sad. We have my dogs add. It's no longer able to add this dog. So what I do is that I say dog data now, get my dogs and then say add. What it's gonna do is get the array list and then it's going to add it to that array list. Same with down here. I'm gonna say dog data dot get my dogs once more. Now it's gonna get those dogs. So now everybody's happy here in the dogs class. Let's go over to the cat controller and give it dogs now as well. So we come in here and we say model.add attribute and we wanna give it the dogs. So we say dogs and then who can tell me what do I need to pass in here for dogs to pass it that data from the data layer. Who wants to try to give that one a shot? What do we put in here? Dog data dot get my dogs. Get my dogs, very good. So there we go, we save that and let's see what happens. So now click it, I didn't, oh, come on. There we go, now it's clicking. Sweet, all started up. All right, let's go back over here. All right, so we got to create some dogs first to go into that array list. So we always say start, age of two. Awesome. We see that we also had pebbles today. That was seven. And then we had, Fro uh, uh, was it not Frodo, it was, uh, Philo? Filoskin. 
I don't even know how to begin to spell that one. Who is this? There was uh, Fido or Philo? Fido? Is it Fido? Fido. 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 There we go. 173 years old. Create. There we go. So we have three dogs here. Let's go over to, oh, I might need to create a link here. I have some link. Oh, there it is. Okay. So we have my cats that we did last lecture with the calico, Siamese that I can't spell in Persian. And now our three dogs. Remember this two string method is the one building all these descriptions. That's why it's in there because we're putting out that two string directly. So we also have our three dogs now. So it looks like cats and dogs are finally getting along here. And the way we did it was the data layer. That's all it took. So any questions about this? Because if not, that's all I have for you all today. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, they're getting along. I, it's not even a funny gif. I thought it was adorable. For someone who's been on NyQuil and I, I think this is absolutely adorable. Oh, oh. cat there. <laughs> that's your data layer. Nice. It's a dog oh. and cats getting together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like Living in sin. <laughs> oh my I'm gosh. Cute. Right. <laughs> All right. Real quick, I do want to get to the bottom before the end of this. And also, anybody have any questions about this? I know it is a little tricky to maybe wrap our heads around in the very beginning, uh, but it is extremely important. So if you do have any questions, please shout them out. Uh, message me directly, message them on the uh, lecture questions. I'm gonna to get to the bottom of my own personal curiosity here. Um, Tom, thanks again for shouting that out at me. I need to see if that is, I am pretty certain you are correct. Um, I'm gonna set this to private. So then we should get that error back if that happens. <laughs> Jeremy, I'm sorry you're overloaded. Um, Anything you want to unload on all, uh, unload on any of those questions at all to, to take a breather from everything. I should put more gifts in this one. There's a lot of information. Hmm. All right, we got Fido, 23. So it looks like it's, I put the setter to private and it's still working. So I. I, I did think it was from the constructor. Tom, anything you also want me to try here? Uh, what if you deleted the parameters from the constructor? Um, as in like delete that out? Um, string name, int age. So it doesn't uh, have, you can't pass it parameters. Okay, yeah, let's see. So get rid of, just make it be an empty constructor. Yeah, we'll see what goes on there. I think we're gonna get another kind of error because that would be just a null in the getter and I don't know how that's gonna happen. Because if it was, the only thing I'm confused about is that if it was, if the setter set to private, there's no way it can access it regardless, so. I would agree. Right. Yeah, let's see. This is what a logo program is like. You never really know what the black magic is exactly behind the behind the scenes. All right, create. Okay, so it's still null and it's 173 years old. So my oh, you know what? Um, so it's not giving you an error because it can't access that. Yeah, what was so weird it's just is passing that, is it, it null. Right. Well, yeah, exactly. So that's why, uh, okay, so name was set to private. So it couldn't set that. But with, when it was up here, it was able to set it. So is it using both of them? So does it use the constructor and then the setter? That's what I'm... Sorry, at this point, I'm talking to myself. I'm, <laughs> I am getting to the bottom of this. This is, if it takes too much time, I'm not going to do it. All right. Uh, also, Jeremy, it's completely understand, compartmentalize. Um, take it out all, out all on the studio tonight. It will help get a little bit more into these models and everything. 
Um, okay, let's see. Fresh. I'm refreshing again, just in case. Okay, Fido, and then 173 here. Okay, I am absolutely baffled. So it looks like it's using the constructor first and then the setters. But why would it use both though? That's like, that seems not the best. Okay. Tom, let's talk offline because this is fun. <laughs> uh, this is interesting. So I, I don't exactly know what the, the magic is behind it. It looks like it's using both the if it can't use the constructor, if it doesn't use the constructor, it tries to use the setter and the setter is private. So what that means for you all though, is that nothing has changed. Just <laughs> make sure that your constructor has your, the, uh, the parameters that you have inside of your HTML, just like we discussed before, make sure it's being set there and make sure that all your uh, setters and getters are public. So, uh, Hopefully that didn't confuse anybody, just that discussion. Just kind of want to dig more into it and see what the background, what, what is doing in the background there. So, um, but we do have just a few more minutes here. So I'll, I'll leave it again open for questions. Uh, anything that anybody wants to go over, see one more time, any kind of examples at all um, before we all depart for tonight. Gosh. Anything at all. All righty then. Uh, so as I said before, um, I will be uh, doing. Stop it. There we go. I will be uh, meeting with you all. Or I will be re back on. I will be back on the Zoom call at eight o'clock here um, to just go through the studio, uh, just to record it, and of course put that solution out there. If anybody wants to join at this time, feel free. Again, we are recording, so don't feel like you have to leave your, your groups. Um, come whenever you do want to, if you do want to, and feel free to ask questions about it. Uh, other than that, thank you, everybody. I hope everyone stays safe, stay healthy this weekend. Um, enjoy the snow, go sledding, or stay indoors and drink hot cocoa. Uh, other than that, thank you all for uh, participating tonight. I hope everyone has a great evening, and yeah, thanks, everybody. Thank Have you, a great time Thank with your studio tonight. Thanks, Kyle. Good night. Thank you. Take care. All right, Kyle. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thank you. Absolutely. Good night. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you. Hey. Whoa. Can you hear me? Nope. I can hear you, Kim. Yep. Oh, my God. Great. Sorry. Hold on. Ah. <coughs> I'm going to figure out what. Okay, I don't understand. Sorry. God, what's going on with my speakers and phone, whatever.